In this video, I'm going to briefly review redox chemistry and then introduce electrochemical cells. So electrochemistry is the branch of chemistry that examines the transformations between chemical and electrical energy. And to understand electrochemistry completely, you need to understand reduction oxidation or redox reactions. And a redox reaction is a reaction in which a substance gains electrons or loses electrons. So reduction is the gain of electrons, and oxidation is the loss of electrons. Electrochemical processes are oxidation reduction reactions in which the energy released by a spontaneous reaction is converted to electrical energy, or electrical energy is used to cause a non-spontaneous reaction to occur. In this section, we will be concentrating on the electrochemical processes that are spontaneous. So if you remember from your previous chemistry courses, a reduction, oxidation, or redox reaction is one in which the oxidation numbers of the components of the reaction change from reactants to products. So you may want to review the redox rules from your previous chapters in the textbook, but if we were to look at this reaction below, magnesium as a solid has an oxidation number of zero, O2 as a gas has an oxidation number of zero, and as that reaction proceeds to produce magnesium oxide, the oxidation number of oxygen changes from zero to minus two, and the oxidation number of magnesium changes from zero to plus two. So because the oxidation number of magnesium increased from zero to plus two, that means that magnesium lost electrons in the process of going from magnesium to magnesium oxide, so that would make it an oxidation half reaction. So a half reaction meaning we're only talking about magnesium going to magnesium oxide and we're not considering the oxygen half reaction. So half reaction meaning we're talking about what's happening to magnesium and not considering what's happening to oxygen, at least not yet. But since oxygen went from an oxidation state of zero to minus two, it gained electrons. So since it gains electrons, then it is a reduction half reaction. So here's one more example of a redox reaction. We have zinc plus acid in equilibrium with zinc two plus and hydrogen gas. So in a redox reaction, there's always gonna be one reactant that loses electrons and one reactant that gains electrons. And we're always gonna look at it in terms of one component on the reactant side and one component on the product side. Similar to when we were looking at conjugate acid, conjugate base pairs. You see what happens with one component on the reactant side, look at the product side, see how it changes, and then you look at the other component on the reactant side, and then look again on the product side to see how it changes. So if we look at zinc, we notice zinc was first a solid, and then it turned to zinc 2 plus. So zinc as a solid is going to have an oxidation number of zero and zinc two plus is going to have an oxidation state of plus two. So it's just like the charge on the ion itself. So since zinc is losing electrons, going from a zero to a plus two, losing electrons, that means it's going to be the oxidation reaction. So zinc loses electrons because the oxidation number increases. And we could also call zinc solid the reducing agent because it causes something else or the other reactant to become reduced. So zinc is the reducing agent. Since the zinc is oxidized, the H plus must be reduced. So hydrogen ions gain electrons. It's going from a plus charge to a neutral charge. So going from a plus one to a zero oxidation number. And because hydrogen is reduced, it must cause the other reactant to become oxidized. So hydrogen ion is the oxidizing agent because it is reduced. So now let's look at this reaction, zinc solid plus copper two plus in equilibrium with copper solid and zinc two plus. Let's split it up into two half reactions. So we have the oxidation half reaction where we're looking only at the zinc. So we have zinc solid in equilibrium with zinc two plus, but notice in that half reaction, we also have two electrons. We have to add the two electrons in the half reaction because we have to balance the charge on both the reactant side and the product side of the chemical equation. We can do the same thing for copper. So we have copper two plus in equilibrium with copper solid, and we have to add two electrons to the reactant side in this case to balance the charge on the reactant side. So both the product side and the reactant side of both of these reactions have a net electrical charge of zero. So these are the two half reactions. 
One is written as an oxidation reaction, that's the zinc reaction, because we have electrons as a product, and the reduction reaction has electrons as a reactant. So again, for oxidation, the zinc is losing electrons to produce zinc 2+, plus, whereas for reduction, copper 2+, plus is gaining electrons to produce copper solid. Now, if we were to put a piece of zinc metal inside a solution of copper 2+, plus, what you would see happen just spontaneously is that the copper 2 plus would deposit itself onto the zinc surface. So that's a chemical reaction that's happening spontaneously. So that is shown by our reaction up here, which shows that the copper 2 plus is turning into copper solid. But if we set up the reaction this way, it's not really doing anything useful for us. All we're doing is depositing copper onto the zinc. If we separate those two components, keep the zinc half reaction separate from the copper half reaction, what we get is what is called an electrochemical cell. And this is an apparatus that converts chemical energy into electrical work or electrical work into chemical energy. So we're going to look at these in a little bit more detail so you can see how they're set up. And we'll also talk about a cell diagram, which is a shorthand notation for a pictorial view that we'll talk about first and it shows how the components of the electrochemical cell are connected. So just quickly before we get into the diagram of the electrochemical cell, there are a few cell components that I will point out when we get there. So there are electrodes which are conducting medium through which electrons can move from one half cell to the other. There's an anode and a cathode. An anode is the electrode at which oxidation occurs. A cathode is the electrode at which reduction occurs. And there's a salt bridge that connects the two solutions of the electrochemical cell. And the salt bridge is there to exchange charges between the electrochemical cells. So it's there to make sure that the charges on either half of the electrochemical cell remain balanced. Because you can't have one half the electrochemical cell becoming more negative and the other half becoming more positive because that is going to inhibit any movement of electrons from one side to the other. Within the salt bridge, there's going to be ions. For example, there might be potassium chloride. So the potassium ions or the cations are going to migrate towards the cathode. That's actually why the cathode is called the cathode. So cations move towards a cathode and anions move towards the anode. So if the salt bridge was made from potassium chloride, the chloride ions would move towards the anode. The cell potential, another word for that is the voltage of the cell, is the difference in electrical potential between the anode and the cathode. And depending on what the anode and cathode are made out of, that cell potential or the voltage is going to be different. So essentially what we're putting together here is a rudimentary battery. So batteries themselves are much more complicated than what I'm going to show in the next few slides. But these will do the same thing as a battery would. It would power a light bulb, it would power some other electrical device. So here's a type of electrochemical cell called a voltaic cell. So a voltaic cell is one in which a spontaneous reaction occurs and electrons will flow just by setting up the electrochemical cell as shown in this diagram. So if I zoom up on the voltaic cell, we have our chemical reaction here at the bottom, which is the same zinc and copper reaction that we looked at previously. But this time notice that all the components of the zinc half reaction are on the left. So we have our zinc 2 plus and our zinc solid electrode. And on the right hand side we have all the components of the cathode. There's the copper 2 plus solution and the copper solid electrode. This is the salt bridge that connects both of the half cells together. And then there's a wire that connects the electrodes together and that is just connected to a voltmeter which tells us the voltage of this particular voltaic cell. Now the salt bridge in this case is made out of sodium sulfate. So you can see the sodium ions are moving towards the right and on the right hand side is the cathode and you can see the sulfate ions they're moving towards the left and this is the anode so remember the anode is where oxidation occurs and we know from the reaction from a few slides ago that the zinc when coupled with copper is the oxidation reaction and copper must be the reduction reaction so copper has to be the cathode now if you take a closer look at what's happening on the surface of the electrodes, that's shown in these blow-ups here. So you can see that on the left, the zinc is dissolving to produce zinc 2 plus, and the copper on the right hand side is depositing itself on the electrode. So that again is shown by the chemical reaction. 
zinc solid going to zinc 2 plus and copper 2 plus going to copper solid. So on this slide, there's also a couple of memory aids to help you remember which half cell is oxidation, which half cell is reduction. And one thing I forgot to mention is the direction of electrons. They are going from anode to cathode. Okay, I always think of electrons going in alphabetical order, right? going from A to C, anode to cathode. So as we saw in the close-up view of the electrodes, we noticed that copper was being deposited on the electrode and zinc was being removed from the electrode. So over time, what's going to happen is the zinc electrode is going to lose mass since it's essentially dissolving in its zinc 2 plus solution, right? The zinc solid is creating zinc 2 plus, whereas the copper electrode is going to gain mass because the copper 2 plus is being deposited on the electrode. So again, here are the two half reaction. So there's the anodic half reaction or the oxidation reaction. Here's the cathodic half reaction or the reduction reaction. And the overall reaction is just the sum of both of those reactions, making sure that the electrons for each half reaction are the same so that they can cancel out. Because you can't have electrons floating around in an overall reaction. So if instead of two electrons here, we only had one electron, then what we would have to do is we would have to double that particular reaction to make sure that we had two electrons that could cancel out the two electrons for the other reaction. So we're not always going to want to draw out pictures like this to show us how an electrochemical cell is connected because that's too cumbersome and we don't need to put in all that detail. So what we would do instead is write out the cell diagram which looks like this down here. And what it shows is the components of the anode on the left hand side of the salt bridge which is shown by this double line here and on the right of the salt bridge shows the components of the cathode or the reduction reaction. So anode on the left, cathode on the right, salt bridge in the middle, and then these single lines here between the components of the anode and cathode are phase boundaries. So the phase boundary just means that we have a solid in contact with an aqueous solution. So it's much easier to draw the cell diagram like this rather than drawing the picture and it gives us the same information. So let's just do a quick practice writing cell diagrams. So we have an electrochemical cell below and what we notice is that we have copper 2 plus and copper solid on the left hand side. We have silver plus and silver solid on the right hand side and we're told that the copper side is the anode and the silver side is the cathode. So electrons are going to be moving from left to right from anode to cathode. We have negative ions moving towards the anode we have positive ions moving towards the cathode. And now to write a cell diagram, we can simply start from the left-hand side of this pictorial view and then move our way towards the right. So first we have the copper electrode. So we're always going to have an electrode on the left-hand side or the extreme left-hand side of a cell diagram. So what is the copper electrode in contact with? We'll draw a phase boundary and then it is in contact with copper 2 plus or copper nitrate. Copper 2 plus is good enough in this case. And then what is a copper 2 plus in contact with? It's in contact with the salt bridge. So we'll write the salt bridge. And then next, the salt bridge, that's in contact with silver plus. And then the silver plus is in contact with the silver solid. So hopefully you can see how I went from left to right there. Copper solid in contact with copper 2 plus which is in contact with the salt bridge, which is in contact with silver plus, which is in contact with silver solid. So let's try another practice. So write the voltaic cell reaction and sketch a cell in which magnesium metal is oxidized to magnesium ions and copper ions are reduced to copper metal. Identify the cathode, anode, and direction of electron flow on the sketch. So this one's asking us to write out the reaction. So we can start with the half reactions and then write the overall reaction and then we'll do a pictorial sketch of the electrochemical cell. So in the question, we are told that magnesium is oxidized and copper ions are reduced. So that's a clue for how to write each half reaction. So if we have magnesium metal being oxidized, we're going to have magnesium solid in equilibrium with magnesium 2 plus plus 2 electrons. And if we have copper ions being reduced, we're going to have copper 2 plus plus two electrons in equilibrium with copper solid. So our first reaction with magnesium is the oxidation reaction. The second reaction with copper is the reduction reaction. 
Now we can write out the overall reaction. We have two electrons on either side for each reaction, so we can cancel those out. So our overall reaction is going to be magnesium solid plus copper 2 plus in equilibrium with copper solid plus magnesium 2 plus. And we should really have aqueous by each of the ions. Okay, so now let's just do a quick pictorial diagram. I'll keep the overall reaction on top. So for pictorial diagrams, you can always start out with a general diagram and then figure out what goes where a little bit later. So you can draw the two beakers with the electrodes and the salt bridge. We can connect the electrodes to a voltmeter. And then now all we have to do is figure out what goes where. So we'll make the left side the anode and we'll make the right side the cathode. That's usually how these are drawn anyway, so it's good to get used to having anode on the left, cathode on the right. So from the question again, magnesium metal is oxidized, so which side of the electrochemical cell does oxidation occur? That's at the anode. So magnesium 2 plus is going to be on the anode side, and then magnesium solid is going to be our electrode. So that means the other side has to be copper 2 plus as the cathode, and copper solid as the electrode. And electrons always go from anode to cathode, so electrons are going to go this way. And if you wanted to add a little bit more to this, if we had a potassium chloride salt bridge, potassium ions are going to go towards the cathode, and chloride ions are going to go towards the anode. So now that we've taken a look at electrochemical cells, what they look like and how they work, how do we determine what voltage is going to be produced by an electrochemical cell? So each half reaction in an electrochemical cell has a standard reduction potential or a voltage that is associated with that particular half reaction. And these can be found in the appendix at the back of your textbook. So a standard reduction potential is the potential of a reduction half reaction in which all reactants and products are in standard states, 25 degrees Celsius. If it's a gas, it's at one atmosphere. If it's a concentration of solutions, it's got to be one molar. So just to emphasize this, these are standard reduction potentials. So all the equations, all the half reactions that you find in the appendix at the back of your textbook, they're all going to be written in the form of a reduction reaction. Now the standard cell potential is the voltage that the electrochemical cell is going to produce when two different half reactions are combined in that electrochemical cell. So for example, the zinc and the copper half reactions producing 1.10 volts when they are put together. If you use copper and silver, as in the previous example, the voltage would be different than the 1.10 volts. And the electromotive force is another word for potential, which is another word for voltage. It just means the force pushing electrons through the electrical circuit. So in order to figure out what the potential of an electrochemical cell is, we need to know the standard reduction potential of the cathode and the standard reduction potential of the anode. And again, we can find these in the back of the textbook in the appendix. So it's a pretty simple equation. You simply take the standard reduction potential of the cathode, subtract the standard reduction potential of the anode. Now the thing to remember about this is since it's a spontaneous reaction, the E cell, or the voltage of the cell, is always going to be positive. So if you get a negative number, you know you've done this backwards. Okay, always has to be positive for E cell when we're talking about a voltaic cell. So here's a partial table of some standard reduction potentials. So we have some positive standard reduction potentials, we have some negative standard reduction potentials. And the value of the standard reduction potential is just telling us how likely is this particular compound going to be reduced or oxidized. So the more positive the standard reduction potential, the more that that particular compound or molecule or atom or ion likes to be reduced. And the more negative the number is, the more it likes to be oxidized. So if you were to couple, in this case, fluoride and lithium into an electrochemical cell, then the fluoride would be the reduction reaction, so it would be the cathode, the lithium would be the oxidation reaction, so it would be the anode. Now if you chose two different ones, for example fluoride and silver, both have positive standard reduction potentials, but since fluoride is more positive, it's going to be the reduction reaction, so silver will be the oxidation reaction. And if you chose two negative ones, for example 
cadmium and lithium. Cadmium is still the bigger number. It's more positive, even though it's negative, than the lithium. So the cadmium is going to be the reduction reaction, and the lithium is going to be the oxidation reaction. So let's just take a final look at the electrochemical cell between zinc and copper. So in an appendix, you would see the zinc half reaction shown like this. So that's in a reduction form because we have zinc 2 plus gaining electrons to produce zinc solid. Remember, gaining electrons is a reduction reaction. And the standard reduction potential of zinc is minus 0.762 volts. Now for copper, if you find that in the appendix, it will be written also as a standard reduction potential copper gaining electrons to produce copper solid and the standard reduction potential of copper 2 plus is 0.342 volts. So if you want to determine the voltage that would result from putting these two together in an electrochemical cell as shown in the diagram, so we have zinc 2 plus and zinc solid on the anode side, copper 2 plus and copper solid on the cathode side, and in this case our salt bridge is down here, what we would do is to take the standard reduction potential of the cathode, 0.342 volts, subtract the standard reduction potential of the anode, which is minus 0.762 volts, and the voltage that we end up with is 1.10 volts. So that would be the standard reduction potential, or the potential of this particular electrochemical cell, if the cell is at standard conditions. And you can see that we have a one molar concentration of both copper and zinc, so if this was at 25 degrees Celsius, then that would be the voltage that would result from this particular electrochemical cell. So that's all I have for this section. If you have any questions, please let me know.